welcome everybody and thank you for joining me. Um, uh, we are in the fourth part of a Corona Hour uh, Intentional Choices discussion on your Corona journey. And I've titled this conversation today, um, your, um, The Essence of You. And I'd really like to I focus on this particularly because what I've become aware of is that um, over the time in this lockdown, that so many people um, across different industries that I come into contact with are faced with this concept of having to be all of them in only one place. Um, others are lucky, like some of you have your permits and you go off and you do work, but you have to almost show up as one person in one place. And you've, you've been able to show up as an individual um, in different ways across different roles that you play. You know, you have a way of showing up as um, in one way when you are at home, um, you have a way of showing up when you're with a customer. You have another way of showing up when you're um, with, with colleagues on the team and you, you may be part of a sports team or so forth. So we're so used to being able to show up in different ways across different parts of our lives. But now we are called to show up in this space um, uh, across different parts of our lives in only, and, and it's a very small space. And I'll give you an example, and I've seen it across the industries, you know, uh, from whether it's chemical industry, the online trading industry, plumbing industry, uh, coaching and uh, leadership development industry that I'm in, um, it seems to be coming out as a theme. Um, I'm, I was on a call the other day and we were discussing a research project that we're doing in, um, in schools where we do some leadership programs in schools. And one of the ladies on the, on the call was finding herself the next moment as she's talking, she's having this professional conversation and, and her little one comes in and actually sits on her lap and um, sits with her for the duration of the call. And suddenly she's having to be a mom and she's having to be this professional person. It happened as well um, in our home with our, I live with three men, uh, my husband and two grown up uh, sons. And one of my sons was on a call to his boss. Uh, and uh, as they were on the call, the two toddlers walked in and started asking me, Dad, these questions. And he has Dad got a move from essentially having a conversation where he's the CEO, he's the professional, he's the boss, he's a colleague, and now he must answer this little toddler. And so at the, it's, it's quite, it can be challenging to be all of you in one place. But I want to remind you what, is, uh, what put, puts those things all together. And that's why I've titled this talk, The Essence of You because it's the essence of you that keeps all of this together. That essential quality that you have, that, that no matter where you are, you have that quality. I'm just going to switch off the webcam now that I've said hello to you. And I also just, um, before we move into the presentation, I just want to thank our OPSA also for extending the series of conversations to support you in your personal state of mind as we go through this. And I'm going to switch the webcam now uh, off as we go into the presentation now. But the, the essence of you is essentially um, that part of you. Um, let me just move the slide. You should see us at this point. Yeah, it's that your way of being that transcends a role, a particular space or a moment in time. Now, for some of you, um, you might not remember what that essence of you is, that quality of you that, that transcends time, or you've almost like put it away. And in this time of pressure, you kind of put it away and you forget about it. And you start focused on all that you're trying to achieve, um, uh, that you forget about the essence of you and how you show up with people across different walks of life. So what I'm gonna to discuss today is um, what is that essential quality? What is your essential quality? And what are some of those communication um, kind of behaviors that get in your way and become blackjacks in terms of you, you bringing all of you to a discussion, to a connection. Now, we're going to talk specifically around connections today um, because that essential quality shows up not only in a positive way for you, but for others as well. So let's just talk about the, what that essential quality is. I've chosen the analogy this morning of um, walking through a forest to just share this essential quality. Because I don't know about you, but if you like walking and you like being outdoors and being uh, like in a forest or climbing mountains, you have that experience where there's something special about that energy of being outdoors. And that's the exact same thing when we talk about the essence of you. It's that special something that you have that creates positive energy, connection and joy with other people. 
And I'm not sure how many of those moments you've had, but they're special. If you think about them in the lockdown, I was talking to a colleague of mine um, uh, uh, last week, and he was just talking about how special the connections are between him and his wife at this point in time, um, because there's just time to slow down. He doesn't have to travel to work in the morning. There's time to actually be together. So it's that special energy that you share. But sometimes when you overplay that positive energy, that special connection, it can also become what I'm going to call a blackjack. So just imagine you're walking through this forest, as you see on the visual now, and you you're connecting to that energy, but you walk past the bush, and you know you look down and you look at what you've actually walked into, and you see those blackjacks on your jacket. It almost takes you, you're physically, you move your head from looking around you down, and you want to start picking off those blackjacks. Now, that's what I'm talking about now. When we overplay our essential quality, we can actually, it can actually become a blackjack, and it can get, uh, we can actually find ourselves, it can interrupt that connection between ourselves and others. And so I want to invite you to think about kind of those blackjack moments you've had um, today um, and over this lockdown time, because we often think that you know these special connections can only happen at a specific time. All these blackjack moments only happen in one area of our life. But if you start to think about how they're showing up in the lockdown, you will also recognize that they show up in other areas of your life. They do show up at work. They do show up um, uh, when you're actually with other colleagues or with a customer. They just have a different way of showing up. So let's just explore this essential quality in a little more detail. You'll see I've chosen to represent the pictures of essential qualities with these stones. And they have sort of special meaning for me because when um, we've gone on holiday, I've got this kind of tray of stones that I've got uh, in my uh, uh, outside area. And we collect stones when we're away. We collect all kinds of shapes and sizes. And I look at that tray and I remember the essential quality of the relationships. It's almost like that connection with the people I'm with, the relationships that I have. And I see it when I see that stone of trays. So I want you now to, for a moment, to consider some of the essential qualities that I'm going to share with you. I'm going to give you three examples. But while we're going through examples, I want you to think about your essential quality and what's that special energy you bring to relationships. Let's just try one of the essential qualities. And that's the essential quality of passion. I was with a plumber before I came to... Um, uh, to the lockdown, and he has, he's energized and passionate, you know, in this meeting, he just, the energy that he exudes brings this, like, sense of wanting to quicken your own pace, you want to jump in, you want to provide uh, real concepts and ideas, and so he creates a special connection of passion that comes into that energy between the two of you. Let's take another one, and that's the one of care. One of my clients, I was working with them on a, um, uh, approaching him and his wife in a session. And the essential quality he displays is that one of care. He just takes care. He's present and caring. And there's a sense of comfort in being in his presence. And so you feel very safe in that presence as a result of his caring presence. And so you want to share things in his presence. So he has that wonderful quality of care. So let's have a look now um, at the essential quality, a third essential quality of wisdom. I was in India some years back teaching this leadership program that we work with, and I'm at a breakfast table, and I meet, uh, these, you know, it's like multiple different people at the breakfast table, and one of the gentlemen sits down and we start having a conversation, and during the conversation, he's just exuding the sense of wisdom. There's so much wisdom coming off him. You know, we went from, to from multiple different topics, from faith to gardening to lecturing, um, and the, the whole conversation started to almost be peaceful and calm. And that, that person exudes the sense of wisdom. It almost makes you reflect. If you look at this, at this tree reflecting, it makes you kind of connect to reflect self-reflection and checking, listening to the statements and paying attention. So what I want to invite you now is to just look at the wisdom in you or, or that essential quality, that essence of you. So I'm going to invite you um, to look at the picture that you have, that one that you create, okay? So the exercise I want you to do, I can't see you, so I'm going to just trust that you're going to try this, even if it's uh, quite difficult. I'm going to ask you, as you sit in your chair, 
to connect your bum bones to the chair for a moment. And actually, um, you know, if you have a chair with a backing, allow the back to actually hold your back. Put the palms of your hands on your on your um, on your your thighs, and just take your shoulder blades back like an old-fashioned hanger, so that you almost create space where your organs are. You know, you're sitting straight. Close your eyes for a moment and breathe in deeply. Just breathe in naturally, in and out, and just become aware of a of a moment where you have recently had where there has been a special connection with somebody. And even if you're on your own in your home, it could have been a special connection you've had on a WhatsApp call or you've had um, on a, a Zoom call and you've been connecting to someone. Cast your mind back to that and think about how you were showing up in that moment. You might have been showing up with intelligence. That might be your essential quality. Maybe with strength, with courage, with kindness. With just fun, with being present and listening and really connecting with others. You may or may not have become aware of your essential quality now. Don't fret. I want you gently to come back into the room, wiggle your toes, wiggle your hands and what you've done is just a few seconds of what we call a sitting practice. And if you're not conscious of your own essential quality, um, one way you can become aware of it is how people, you know, people will reflect it back to you. They'll tell you. But I've also invited you into a, into a, a practice on my website to actually identify the essential quality of others. Now you say, Debbie, well, why would you invite me? Why? Why again are you inviting me into this essential quality? Why do I need to access that unconscious part of my essential quality? Well, it's that thing that actually creates the magic when you connect with other people. And you're going to connect with people when you go back into the workplace and you go back into kind of the new normal. And so we need to connect to that because we forget it and we get lost in it. And what happens is that we start to almost like lose why things are special and how we create specialness. And we focus on our blackjacks we forget what our essential quality is. We almost also attempted to focus on other people's blackjacks. So blackjacks are what we call um, essentially are those things where we, which we call in the program I teach called co-resolve. It's communication biases, but I find blackjack, the blackjack analogy is so much easier to remember. It's like takes me away from the connection that we spoke about in that forest. They don't have to relate to your essential quality. They actually um, can be any bad habit that we develop which breaks the connection between us and other people. I've just connected them to our essential quality because they're easy to remember that way. And I'm going to share three examples with you out of a potential six different kinds of blackjacks that create these connections between us and others. So let's have a look at one. The first one I'd like to share with you is this, this blackjack of, uh, of interruptions. That passionate plumber I spoke about, he is so passionate about what he's doing that as you're having a conversation with him, he's just like interrupting you the whole time. There's this constant, but why? What about this? Have you thought about this? Where are we going with this? Okay, this won't work for the following reasons. And this passion becomes overplayed and now it becomes an interruption and it disconnects him from me and we can we disconnect our opportunity to actually get the wisdom that he holds from this wonderful essential quality of his. So I want to share with you one of the ways that you can just start to work with the kind of antidote of uh, you know the interrupting, stopping, uh, preventing these um, interruptions um, and empowering yourself and others because to you by be able to watch our blackjacks and intentionally choose to interrupt them, we can now enhance the connections we have with other people. So one way, and he did this, he acknowledged the interruption. He said, oh my word, I'm interrupting you and we're not going anywhere. We're not able to finish the conversation. And we, he basically um, agreed with me that he would agree approach to actually wait and, in, and, uh, and write down everything that he had in front of him that he was thinking so we could actually access the wisdom of his passion, of his essential quality 
when we got to the end of the kind of what we were, were discussing. Often people don't do what he did. He was self-aware and he didn't recognize his own um, uh, passion and so and how he was interrupting and he lost sight of that. So in fact, um, um, sometimes you need to hold up a mirror for people to actually see that they're interrupting. And it's quick and easy to do. You just indicate to them, I'm aware that you're interrupting, um, that there's interruptions and I'm conscious of those interruptions and I'm, I'm kind of conscious that it's, I'm not able to share what I'm looking to share and I'm wondering how we, we work with that. Do you want to, to interrupt as we go along and ask your questions and deal with the detail now or wait till the end? So that's interruptions, those kind of blackjack moments. Here's another one for you. This, this, uh, this way of angel being, often present in caring people, in people who kind of think very quickly or very ad 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 adapted to thinking on their feet and they will angel wing on behalf of others. They come in to rescue people during a conversation. In a recent meeting I had, um, uh, the, one of the colleagues was sitting in a meeting and she said, you know, as we were defining the deadlines, she actually said to, uh, said to the person who was running the meeting, I really think we need to worry about the deadlines and we need to think about, um, we need to be concerned about this other person. And she mentioned her and said, okay, because she's really under a lot of pressure. That's what we talk about angel winging. You speak on behalf of somebody else. Now you may be thinking you are really taking care of them, but actually in a way, you're not empowering them. And at that point in time, they may feel very disempowered because they're actually quite happy with the deadline that is going to take place. They're quite happy with what's going to happen in that moment. And so they're quite are comfortable uh, with where they are, but you've now put them in a difficult position. So if you are the organizer of the meeting, um, the conversation, the discussion, very, it's very easy for you to work with that angel winging just refer to the person who has now been, been rescued, you know, so to speak, and look at them and ask them, is there anything you particularly need? You know, we're talking about you. What do you need in order for this decision to be made? And then to, to, for, uh, turn to that angel and ask them what they themselves need, because often we angel wing, but what we're really trying to do is express our own needs, and we don't do that. So I'm just inviting you to think about that blackjack and whether it shows up in the way that you behave. And as we're going through this, you might have thought about other blackjacks that interrupt your connection with people. Remember, there are many, many of these and just be aware of them. Let's look at the last one. You know, that not being present, it's very much a part of today's society not being present. We almost, um, uh, you know, if we relate it to that essential quality of wisdom, sometimes a really wise person will slow down their thinking to listen to what you first said in the conversation. And so they almost disappear in their head because they're listening to the first thoughts that you shared. And now they're not listening to the other stuff. So they're actually not present. And there's a disconnection that happens between you and them. But it often just happens from a bad habit, right? People just disconnect because they see their cell phone flashing and so they get, they look at their cell phone and they go, oh, I need to look at my cell phone. And so they disconnect from the conversation. You can very quickly um, uh, uh, interrupt that by taking a vote or asking the question, or asking a question and then they need to answer you. And so you can actually, you know, interrupt that, that um, blackjack moment. There are other blackjacks which I mentioned and here's a couple of them, I'm not going to go through them. But what I want to do now is I want you to just check in for yourself where you are, right? I want you to answer these questions and you'll notice that I've brought a couple of the, um, the um, things that we learned last week into this session just to remind you because they all come together to actually show up uh, in the way that you are being and how you actually engage or connect with others. So answer the question, the statement um, with one, strongly disagree, five strongly agree or I actually don't know. So here we go through the, the questions and just take the time. When I acknowledge the reason I value doing something, I'm motivated to get you done, get it done. Remember last time we spoke about achievement motivation. So I get it done when I know why I'm doing it. I willingly put a lot of effort into my actions when I identify the meaning. What's your rating? 
when I ground myself in my essential quality, I experience positive energy, joy and happiness between myself and others. I recognize my blackjack behavior when connecting with others and hopefully you've identified it and how it does disconnect you from others. And you can easily recognize it when you think about the kind of feedback your kids give you or your spouse gives you. I choose to interrupt my blackjack behavior. I want to empower myself and others when I connect with them. Focusing on my personal best, you know, that personal best goal that we spoke about last week, so that you can move from intention to action, helps me grow manageably and relevantly. My personal best builds that unique value my behavior brings in relation to others. And my unique value supports my journey to achieve a gold standard. And hopefully we've introduced you to a gold standard for yourself, for your relationships and for your business by just introducing you to the concept of blackjacks and this essential quality of yours that brings that connection with others. So my invitation is go to the resource to connect into the essence of others. Often we can recognize the essence of others first before we can see it in ourselves. And, um, and so I'm encouraging you to recognize it in others. Because if you can recognize it in others, you can focus on their essential quality as opposed to constantly focusing on their blackjack behavior. You want them to polish up that essential, be that essential quality, to bring it out, to, take, to make it alive. So here's my invitation as we close, because it is about your intentional choices and supporting you. May you choose to share the essential quality, your essential quality in connection with others. Be the change that you want to see. That's how we make it come alive. Mm. Well, I just want to say thank you for attending uh, and thank you for your attendance, um, your presence in today's session. And, um, and I really want to encourage you. I was with a client last week um, and I was so reminded of how he focused on his own blackjacks in so many ways. And he absolutely lost sight of his own essential quality. And I'd really like to invite you to connect with your own essential quality um, and recognize how you bring the magic in relationships and how you bring it to, the, to customers um, and to others in your lives. It plays up in all areas of your life. And thank you for being here.